Okay, after a quick shower break, we're back. All right, so moving on to the third on the list here from this anonymous letter um, that I got for, with $150 in it to review these four films. We are on film three, and that film is Dead Shack, which is on uh, Shudder. Um, and, okay, so... <clears throat> This is a film that I've already reviewed. I didn't do a spoiler discussion on it, though. So here we go, spoiler discussion. Um, I was very lukewarm on this. Like, I and, and on this viewing, I feel exactly the same. What this film has going for it is its characters, especially the father. Oh, especially the father. The father is, is the funniest part of this movie, for sure. This is a horror comedy. And it's premise. You know, some woman who has a family, she wants to keep them alive. You know, in her eyes, they're zombies, but she's trying to feed them, keep her family together, whatever. And these guys just so happen to run across her operation, want to save the day, come in, fuck her shit up, kill everybody, move on, whatever. Okay, so the concept is fine, good. And you've got characters which are all pretty damn good. Like, I really enjoy the character, so I can see why someone would be much higher on this movie than I am if they're, like, super into these characters. Like, my bug bite. I have, like, three of them. Fucking annoying. Um, but I get... I just kind of get lost somewhere around the midline. As soon as, like, they leave the house and they find the dead shack is where the film kind of lulls for me. That first, like, third of the film, where we've, we've got introduced to these characters, you know, Jason, and then his friend, and then his sister, his friend's sister, and then the dad, and the dad's girlfriend, and all this. All that stuff is really good. Love all the setup, love all the character development, love getting to know these people. The dad was cracking me the fuck up, because his humor is so similar to mine, especially, especially when they're at... A restaurant sitting down. The some of the shit he says to her. This is so me at a restaurant, and the responses he gets from the waitress is just fucking gold. And the way he responds to her responses is even golder. Okay, it is pure golden. It's amazing. I was laughing so hard because that's the kind of shit I do. Now I'm famous for one joke in particular in my family. And I've done this every single time we've ever dined out anywhere. If you ever go out to dinner with me, shout out to anyone who's ever dated me and went out to dinner with me because they know this joke. And this is a joke that my dad started and I've carried forever. But of course, I've exaggerated it and I keep doing it every single time. Um, and that is that I always set it up like it's not happening. Like, I always come up with a new way to trick everyone into listening to me. And then it comes and they're like, oh my God, this fucking joke again. And they're like, there it is. There it is. I was expecting the entire time we're sitting here. Even when we get there to the restaurant, they'll be like, Jason's going to make the joke. But I'm telling you, every single time they laugh. And all it is, is that I essentially set up the joke to be that someone at the table needs to let the waitress know that I don't have any money, <laughs> that I can't pay the bill. And it's just, it's become this ridiculous setup every single time. I always lean into my kids and be like, girls, I need you to listen up. Like, this is really serious. And they're like, what's up, dad? I'm like, I need you guys to like rock, paper, scissors. Just, so and you can see as soon as I started on it, you can see the rolling of their eyes and they're like, oh fuck, really? We're doing the, I can't pay the bill joke again. And it's like, one of you guys have got to tell this waitress, that I just don't have any money this time. It's really embarrassing, but I really don't have money this time. And they're like, dad. So like this whole thing where he's like, um, first we can start off with some bigger menus. They give him these huge menus. And he, he's just like, looks over at her like for a joke. And he's like, she's like, nope. And then he goes in and he's like, you know, the kid tries to order something ridiculous and he's like, come on, like, I'm a good parent. You know, we're just going to have four beers all around. And then he looks over like, ah, ah, 
I get you. And she's just like deadpan. And he's like, no, okay, N- never mind. That fucking humor just murders me. I love this shit. I guess dad humor is like one of the things that just works for me and always has, even before I was a dad. And I said this before on the channel, but dad humor, AKA genius, that's what dad humor is. Okay. Anybody who doesn't like dad humor doesn't understand the genius of dad humor. Okay. Puns on the spot are really fucking hard and clever as shit. So appreciate. Anyway. Um, then, oh, and then he goes to the place and they get to the, the cabin where they're renting and they look at it. What the fuck is this? And he's like, do you really think that I could afford something that didn't look like this? That wasn't a risk to our health. <laughs> that shit is so fucking funny. And then when they get in the car before that, and she, he's like accusing his sister of liking sausages, and then the dad's like, come on. Of course your sister likes sausages. That shit is so funny. It's such a dad, it's such a me dad thing. Like I'm gonna be that quote unquote cool dad who probably embarrasses the shit out of my kids on a daily basis. But like, it's so hard for me to pass on a joke. I feel like I've lost so many clients that I've lost so many friends. Like when someone like T-balls me up a joke, no matter how offensive, no matter how bad, I know it's going to hurt their feelings, no matter how, you know, how bad the timing is on the joke. 99% of the time I'm taking the shot. 99%. I can't, it's like, it's like OCD. It's like Tourette's. I have like fucking humor Tourette's. Right, someone sets up the joke and I'm like, oh God, please don't make me say it. But I don't even have that kind of reaction. It's more of just a, like, I, I can't, it's such a good joke. And then I'm proud of myself for saying it and nobody else is. Nobody else is proud of me for saying it. But this dad just kind of reminds me of it. So I was really having a great time with this dad throughout. Now, the interactions between Jason and, and his buddy and his sister and all that, um, they're good. I like these characters a lot. I do. I think they kind of remind me of something like characters from, let's say, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse or something. Good stuff. Really like them. Now, they don't hit the levels of comedy that Scout's characters do. I just think that they kind of have that same feeling to them. They're, they're good characters. They're good actors. But their comedy doesn't land for me as much. Like most of the kids' jokes in this aren't that great. And you got a lot of like family drama kind of interject injected in here and stuff. And I'm just like, mm, I, think I get where you're going for. And I think it mo- I think it works fine. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm not saying it doesn't land. It just doesn't land hard. It's kind of like, oh, okay. I think mm, now we know that about this person. And, you know, he's into the sister, and that doesn't really ever go anywhere. I don't need it to be some, like, oh, he gets the girl in the end and all that shit. That that doesn't need to be at all. Um, But it's just, like, little things set up here and there. And it's just, I don't know. It doesn't really pay off, I suppose. Um, I like that the kid has to blow his own, like, stepmom. She's not really a stepmom because they're not married. But, uh, yeah. This chick looks like she's not much older than, than his kids there. And she's pretty hot, though. I'll, I'll give her. I'll give him that. And she's like constantly drunk and hates everything. And their humor together that was pretty funny. Um, I, I did like her. And he has to blow her fucking head off, which was brutal. Um, but there's some. There's a, a lot of CGI used in that kind of stuff, so it kind of downplays the awesomeness of the on-screen gore. It's like, well, that would have been cool, but unfortunately. It was CG, so that's not great. Um, the heart-to-heart the dad has with his son while the kids are being, like, chopped up in the background. That was, that was, you know, everything the dad does in this movie works for me. He just carries the film, for sure. And then, you know, here you go. This is the perfect example of why you kill the killer while they're on the ground. You cost your dad your, his life. The best of you died. Because of your incompetence to kill this girl. And then they smash her when she's, you know, on the ground. And it's like, well, you should have done that before. And your awesome fucking father, who should be my best friend, is dead now. 
so you fucked up and you got to carry that with you for the rest of your life so yeah um good characters decent concept not great execution but dad kills and uh there's some fun to be had here not a waste of time you know something that's like a one-time watch for me now i watched it twice but i don't think i have any ever interest in watching it again but i don't hate my time with it it's fine it's it's decent so thank you to whoever sent this and i'm going to get to your last film four in a row let's go